Good evening everyone, very happy to see you all this evening joining the Zoom meeting to hear the word of God. To start a service, let's all sing some songs and uh, praise Him. For our first song in a song service, let's all sing hymn number 478, Sweet Hour of Prayer. 478, Sweet Hour of Prayer. Let's all sing him number 159, Be All Rugged Cross. 159, Be All Rugged Cross. I 
Good evening everyone, very happy to see you all this evening as you have joined this year to Zoom today. Today I take the privilege to welcome you all for the Zoom devotion. I would like to read a verse from the Bible that is from Matthew chapter 10 verse 13. If the house is worthy, give it your blessing of peace. But if it is not worthy, take back your blessing of peace. With this beautiful verse, I would like to welcome each one of you for the Zoom prayer meeting. In order to start our service, let's all sing hymn number 330, Take My Life and Let It Be, after which I request Karnakanta to please lead us in the opening prayer. Now let us sing 330 as our opening song. Take my lips and let them be 
Let us pray. Gracious God, loving Father in heaven, we are so privileged and uh, honored to come to thy presence this evening, Lord, as thy children come to, together in one faith and Lord, in one truth that we believe in our Jesus Christ. Lord, as you have laid the way and shown us the path, May the word prepared for each one of us enlighten our hearts and strengthen our faith, Lord, and bring joy and peace in our hearts, in our lives, Lord. As thy servant has prepared the word, which is the seed, may the seed germinate in our hearts and bring the fruits of spirit in our lives. As we all prepare to listen thy word, Lord, bless each and every family who has gathered in thy presence. As thy word is thy presence, Lord, may thy presence go with each one of us and may our hearts be open to listen thy word and live accordingly, Lord. Lord, we submit all these faithful ones who have been hearing from past and you have leading us throughout the past with thy Holy Spirit and making us convenient to listen the word and Lord understand it and Correct our lives and prepare for thy soon coming, Lord. We pray for each and every one, especially we pray for the older ones. Bless them and Lord, give them good health and strength, Lord. We pray for the sick and suffering, Lord, as the world is passing through and many disasters, Lord, but we have a blessed hope in thee, Lord, that we are worshiping the true living God who has who protects us and leads us and guides us, Lord. And with that blessed hope, may we go forward and carry thy word, thy gospel, and Lord, be a witness in these end times before thy coming, Lord. May this <clears throat> we be part of this finishing gospel, and Lord, help us, give us the divine understanding and knowledge, so that, Lord, may we accomplish the work which you have Commission for each one of us, and so that the Lord may your coming be soon. We all prepare our hearts as we listen to thy word. Bless your servant as he has dedicated his life unto thy service, Lord. Bless him and give him good health, provide him all the needs that he requires. And may you be a witness to many of us as we are living in these end times. Because, Lord, we place all our supplications unto thy feet. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen. Thank you, Uncle, for the beautiful prayer. Now, this time I give no, I give the time to Elder Robert, Uncle, as his uh, preaching, and uh, we are getting to know all the new things and good knowledge transfer. Now, this time I give it to Robert, Uncle, to please share the word. Thank you. Praise the Lord and uh, thank you and uh, the open prayer that all are keeping well by the grace of God from the time uh, we met yesterday till today and um, God is good all the time. So I hope and pray that um, we're um, taking notes of what the Lord is trying to reveal to us as reminders. All of us know these things, but from time to time, God needs to give us reminders so that we can... Uh, be shaken and woken and so that we can do what the Lord wants us to do. So I hope and pray that we're encouraged um, uh, to study more and not just study more, but prepare and prepare others. So like always, I like to give testimonies to, to the glory of God. So uh, from the time we are here, um, we visited all the homes here. And uh, I don't know if I told you all uh, any time before, but... Um, I happened to go and give uh, everybody here uh, Banginipalli mango. Banginipalli mango. I went and told them this mango is from where I come from in India and to the 10 houses in one mile radius where we live in the countryside houses. So um, I carried the box in my hand, walked to all these places and gave. But to one house I want to highlight just to tell. Uh, they're an elderly couple. They're the, for us, the immediate neighbor. They're not very next door to ours. Uh, there's nobody next to us, but uh, if you walk down the lane, a dead end lane that we are on, 
the first house that comes to us is an elderly couple and uh, they hardly can go out. So uh, I tend to once in a while go and uh, take them around or um, we are, a lot of times we're in their house. Sometimes uh, Fridays our Vespers is in their house. They don't, um, even though they're um, uh, from uh, background of a Methodist uh, anciently, but today they technically don't believe in God or anything. They just live their lives and we're trying to be a witness. So me and my wife, we go, we clean their house upside down and um, do things for them, cook food for them and everything else. And um, the son, one son is actually um, um, disabled since um, young age. So he's in a disabled center. Uh, recently was in, um, uh, taken to hospital in a serious condition. And uh, she was really concerned and worried and she desperately called us. So we went and spent hours with her, trying to encourage her and strengthen her. And we said, we'll pray for her. They don't want us to pray um, openly with them. But uh, yes, okay, we'll pray for you means, okay, that's all they say. And they don't want us to hear us pray, literally. But uh, by the grace of God, we talk about God a little bit and we sing songs, but that they love us singing songs for them. And uh, we're able to see. So um, she uh, said, I know my son is coming back. I said, how do you say that? Um, she was hesitating to say that uh, because you all are praying. <laughs> but we praise God. We praise God that we are able to be witness. Uh, God wants people to be witnesses, meaning people have to see something different in us. And only then they will be willing to listen to God's word, even those who don't believe in God. And I hope and pray that we as a remnant will be those witnesses. Because Matthew 24, 14 simply says, and this gospel shall be preached in all the world as a witness, and then shall the end come. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your grace. Thank you for the breath of life and counting among the living. I pray, O oh Lord, that you would continue to open our eyes that we may see you, that you do open our ears that we may hear you. Forgive me, cleanse me, make me whole, make me worthy of your calling that you would speak to me and through me and to all of us under your hearing. Close all my thoughts and that you would only give words that you would want us to hear. Be with uh, everyone under the forum that's listening to your words. May no disturbance be given to us, that your Holy Spirit and holy angels will give us understanding, that Satan and his angels will get out of bay in our devices and in the homes or wherever we are. For these blessings I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Today we are um, on day two, studying um, the remnant of our seed. That is the theme for the four days that we are going to study. So yesterday we touched um, to see who the remnant are, what they are to be through this life and uh, journey of Joseph. And uh, we learned lessons there. I hope and pray that um, we understand. So now... Through Joseph, we touched actually the patriarchs before the Joseph, and therefore the lineage that uh, we have today, uh, the literal children of Israel, descendants of um, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and ultimately one of them being Joseph and his children coming through. So today, we as the remnant, uh, and in fact, all Christianity can claim to be the children of Israel. That's what the New Testament identifies us to be spiritual sons and heirs of Abraham by adoption. So today there is a remnant. So we need to understand again before we actually on the last day we'll talk about literally ourselves. But until then we will learn lessons about the remnant from the Bible. How remnant ought to be and throughout history what happened. So here now we pick up the story of the children of Israel. Now, children of Israel was a chosen generation, was a chosen generation by God. God chose Abraham and he said, your children will be like the stars of the sea and the sand, sorry, sand of the sea and the stars of the sky. And so they were countless in multitude. And you can see the records in the whole Old Testament to testify to that. So now this nation was chosen by God that they can go and be witnesses 
And in the Old Testament context, they're called the remnant. You can study this so many times and you will find that um, children of Israel were identified as the remnant. And like we touched yesterday, to say that even in the remnant, the so-called remnant, meaning Seventh-day Adventists, there will be a remnant because all baptized Seventh-day Adventists, unfortunately, according to what the spirit of prophecy, Ellen White writes, will not make it. She very clearly says many will leave because the testing comes too much and the standards are too high. And people want to live and do what they want to do, even though they're in the Seventh-day Adventist Church, the remnant church. And that is why it is important to understand why it is like that. We're going to explore why it is like that. Why is it that so many of us are lukewarm? God himself says you're lukewarm and I will spew you out. So what is it? Why is it? Why are we lukewarm? What is the matter? What lessons can we learn? First Corinthians 10, 11, 11, 10 simply tells us all the lessons of the children of Israel are lessons for us. So the journey of the children of Israel leaving literal Egypt, going to literal Canaan is lessons for spiritual children of Israel, especially the remnant because they were the chosen generation and seven Adventists is the chosen generation for this time. So we have to learn lessons from them so that we don't fall prey to the devices of Satan of how he took them down. He took them down as a nation. They rejected the Messiah when he came. They were waiting for somebody to come and set up a throne and a kingdom on earth. That's what they were waiting for. From to relieve them from the bondage of Rome. They did not understand what the word of God was teaching to them. They had the word of God with them. They memorized the Torah by heart from beginning the first word till the last word of the Torah. They memorized even from the age of 12. They memorized, 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 memorized. And we do the same too. I grew up in a Seventh-day Adventist home. My parents used to give me, from the time I began reading, the, one of the first things they taught me to read is the Bible. In fact, they told me, the more you read more Bible, the better you'll be able to read and learn and talk. And that's what we did. And that's what we most uh, Adventist homes do to the children. And that is a reality. And that is true. I'm not uh, undermining that fact at all. This is true. But... The problem is we do it so many word that we're actually trying to read. I'm telling about myself. I don't know about you. I don't know how many times I read this Bible. I don't know. Countless times. Because every year I would get a Bible reading plan. Genesis 1 to Revelation 22. And my parents would monitor. Are you reading? And I can't tell lies. Especially about the word of God. You can't tell lies even though we are young and growing up as kids. So here what we need to understand, the Jews rejected the Messiah when he came. And as a nation, they were rejected. I'm just setting up the stage to understand what happened to the chosen generation or the remnant in the Old Testament. So that we can understand the remnant in the New Testament, which is us, seven dead vendors, and what we ought to do. So here, if, if you explore what is happening here in the journey, if you look at the details, it is profound. Let me set the stage of their journey. Now, they were in land of Goshen. If you remember, study the book of uh, Exodus very clearly. They lived in the land of Goshen. Yeah. In fact, Joseph told the brothers when the Pharaoh said, bring your father and your brothers and we, they can stay in Egypt. So Joseph said, ask for the land of Goshen. So they remained in the land of Goshen all their years until the time of the Exodus. So in the time of the Exodus, they have to leave Goshen and go to Canaan. Now, Goshen to Canaan in today's uh, estimation is less than 9,000 kilometers. It's less than 9,000 kilometers journey. 
and how many how long did it take 40 years 40 years if you walk by foot even in those days with all the cattle and with all the tents and with everything by foot it should not take even a year to walk 9000 kilometers it's less than 9000 by the way but they took 40 long years and was it only 40 years no it was 80 years because just before they reached the promised land god sent them back another 40 years that is a snapshot view of what happened let us explore exactly what is happening here in this scenario now if you look at exodus chapter um, 12 exodus chapter 12 god told them to have a passover this is the 10th plague the angel of death is going to pass that night and the firstborn is going to be killed remember this this is when the blood was told to put on the doorpost and the angel would pass over so this is exactly the time that is also happening so now when this happened, the blood was put on the doorpost and who had put the door, blood on the doorpost, the angel of death passed by and it was not happened. And then now Pharaoh said, you go because his firstborn died and all the firstborn of all Egypt died. So Pharaoh said, go. Now we begin the journey. That's Exodus chapter 12. So now they come to Red Sea. Now they're so used to being in Egypt doing the things of Egypt and uh, got so much accustomed to Egypt. So don't know if they were praying the times that they were taught to pray before. We need to question these things in our mind and understand what was happening. They got so ingrained in the society of Egypt. While we're looking at them, we need to explore ourselves too. Are we too? engrossed or ingrained in Egypt today. We're talking about the world today. This world is like Egypt, like Sodom and Gomorrah. And that is why we are leaving this spiritual Egypt, going to spiritual Canaan, which is heaven, Canaan land. So are we also ingrained in that? We're going to touch a couple of points on this context about us and what we are doing because here these people got so accustomed after the, the generation remained in egypt and was so much punished with the burdensome torture of slavery that pharaoh brought upon them because they were prospering and god was with them even in egypt and they were multiplying so god is with us even today in this egypt that we are living in and he prospers us as well but is that prosperity taking us to our heads and thinking oh i am good and, and riches and all that's what revelation 3 god describes you think you have everything and no need of nothing but you are blind miserable naked wretched and so on and so forth that's what he describes are we like that with we're looking at who we ought to be as remnant so now the children of Israel are asked to leave. They leave. They come to the Red Sea. Now, two sides are hills. And behind, Pharaoh determined, no, let, uh, I think I made a mistake of letting them go. Let's go get them back. Otherwise, who's going to do all the work here in Egypt? So now they're pursuing. Pharaoh is pursuing. They come to a point. There is no way to go. They have not learned to trust the God still. They have not learned to trust the God completely. What is our situation? Have we learned to trust God implicitly? Hebrews 11 verse 1 gives a description of what trust meant to be. It's described in the word faith. Faith and trust go synonymous. Hand in glove, so to say. So if you have the trust, you will have the faith. If you have the faith, you have the trust in God. 
So here they don't have the trust. And so that you see here, now that is Exodus chapter 14. They arrive at the Red Sea. And God opens the Red Sea. Just look, just see what's happened. God opens the Red Sea and they go through the Red Sea. Remember, we're going to go through a lot of trials and tribulations. The knocking of the time of trouble is being heard right now, meaning the passing of the sender law. The image is being set up. The stage is ready. Don't know what's going to happen. Co-op 26 is around the corner. In a couple of months, Co-op 26 is going to happen. Don't know if they will enforce Climate Sunday. We don't know. Only God knows. We have to wait and see. If Climate Sunday is declared around the world, we are done. We need to be uh, aware because when that happens, we will not have time. Time is now. This is a great period for us as remnant people on the journey to Canaan land. So here you see, now God opens the way and they cross. They cross. And once they go to the other side, the very next thing God does is he changes their diet plan. He changes their diet plan. I want to say that again. The very next thing. Now, this is Exodus chapter 16. You can read. The very next thing he did is change their diet plan. And if you read Psalm 78, it very clearly tells us that God changed the diet plan because he did not want them to have any diseases of Egypt. God wants strong people in his army today to be soldiers, to witness and go far and wide and tell people God does not want sick people. The remnant cannot be sick people. I'm not condemning nobody. I'm a sick person because I did not change the diet plan that God want me to change because nobody taught us otherwise, even in the remnant church. Let me remind you. October 22, 1844, Millerite movement happened. Great disappointment happened. October 23rd, Hiram Edson was given the vision that Jesus moved from the holy to the most holy. So he saw Jesus in the most holy place. They were excited. They got together, studied again, and understood that Jesus moved from holy to most holy. And ultimately, seven Adventist movement happened, not church. Unfortunately, today we call it church, and we are like every other church. We are supposed to be a movement and moving, and we are not moving. We are like a church, like all other churches. No difference at all. No difference. The remnant have no difference at all to the rest of the Christianity. 44,000 recognized denominations, registered denominations that exist today. So now here what happened, the diet has changed to the remnant, the very first vision when we were formed as a church. May 21, 1863, we were formed as a church. And then May, that same three weeks later, June 6th, the very first vision given to Ellen White as Seventh-day Adventist now is health reform. Health reform, the very first Vision given, God knew what his people needed, exactly what he did to the children of Israel. As soon as they crossed the Red Sea, he gave them manna to eat so that no diseases will be there. They will be strong. They can go and take the giants in Canaan. God knows what he needs to do and what people need to have. And that is exactly what God wanted us to go. October 20, 1844, or even May 21, 1863 is gone. Today, 2021. And remnant are still the remnant, like the children of Israel. No difference. No difference whatsoever. Just going through the motions. Six days shall the labor and do all thy work. Seven days Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor the son, nor the daughter, nor the manservant. Even that some people are not keeping, including seven dead Adventist pastors and their children. I've seen it myself. 
and we think all is well and we are going to heaven. No, you are going to go to hell. Just like the children of Israel, as a nation, God's remnant have to stand and abide by what God has appointed. So here you see the, now manna is given and they're complaining as they go through this manna, they're complaining. Exodus chapter 16, you can read. They're complaining. God gives them quails. Just because they're complaining and because they're demanding and asking, God gives you whatever you ask because he's a gracious God, even though it's not good for us. Because we are asking, God will give it. Okay, you want to have this? Have it. And then read the consequences. But this is what I want to give you. And you take this. This is the benefits you get from it. That's what God is trying to tell us. So here. So now here, what is happening is literally quails given, heaped up. They were eating till their nostrils. It was, you read the account. Even if you read, it is um, sometimes uh, terrible to comprehend what they were doing, what is described in the Bible. And while it was still in the mouth, many were killed. And those that were not killed, if, if you read the account, let's read this account actually in Numbers 11 quickly, just for get another second important point that we need to get. Numbers chapter 11. Numbers chapter 11. I'll read a couple of verses just to get us um, some understanding here. Okay, verse 4. Verse 4. Now this is happening at uh, Kibroth Hatava. This is happening in the place called Kibroth Hatava. Now here you see and the mixed multitude, verse 4 says, and the mixed multitude, that is the problem. That is a problem in the children of Israel leaving Egypt. They saw that God is with these people. So, so many Egyptians came with them too. So, there was a mixed multitude. Today, even now, we have a mixed multitude in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Because what we tend to do today, because the, the leadership sets up targets, you need to get this many baptisms. So people simply go, put some effort meetings, hold some meetings, tell about Jesus Christ, and dip them and leave them. Literally in Telugu, say Munche, sir. In everything, Munche, sir. Not, not only in the neat lone gadu. Munche, sir. Matthew 28, 19 and 20 says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son and Holy Ghost. That is verse 19. Verse 20 says, after that, teaching them to observe all things. That is lacking and that is why we have mixed multitude in the remnant. And that is why Ellen White says, not one is preparing for Jesus coming out of hundred. And we think we're all remnant, we're all going to heaven because we keep Sabbath. No way. So here, children of Israel, those who did not die by the plague, God now punishes them further. Read the account. In fact, let me finish these two verses. I want to complete and finish. Verse 4 of Numbers 11. And the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting, and the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who shall give us flesh to eat? And verse 5 says, We remember the fish which we did in Egypt freely, and the cucumbers, and the melons, and the leeks, and the onions, and the garlic. Now verse 6. And now... Our soul drieth away. There is nothing at all beside this manna before our eyes. So what God gave was not good for them. In fact, it, manna, if it's described in Psalm 78, if you read, it says manna is the bread of heaven. It's also called angel's food. 
And so those who, who are preparing for heaven, Jesus is coming eventually, imminently, in um, potentially our lifetime. He's coming. And if we don't see death, otherwise, we can have the privilege of going to heaven alive. And that is what potentially we're going to eat. Mana, angels' food, the bread of heaven. And if we still... Lust after the fish and after the meat. In another account in Exodus, you would see the even meat, everything, flesh food you're talking about. We still lust after this. There is no way we are preparing for Canaan. You know how many people left Egypt? At least one question I should ask every time. How many men, adult men, left Egypt? Can somebody give me an answer, please? One question every day. Anybody can unmute and help me with Five lakhs. Five lakhs. Six lakhs. Yeah. Five is just about close, but six is correct. Thank you so much. 600,000. In our UK term, it's 600,000. Indian term, 6 lakhs. Okay. 600,000, 20 and above adults. That is men, because they were counted. What about the women? What about um, the other children below 20? Just imagine how many people left Egypt. How many entered? Can somebody two. answer me? How many that left entered? Two left. Two. two entered Canaan. Two people. Can you just imagine? Can we imagine God wanted to take the children of Israel from Egypt so that can, they can live in Canaan? Take them from Goshen and make them stay in Canaan, promised land. Land flowing with milk and honey. How many people go? Two. That is going to happen to 722. Ellen White says, thousands will come and take the place of 722. When the loud cry happens, that is going to be a future for us. When the passing of the Sunday law happens, the loud cry will escalate. Those that are sealed among the 722, those that are sealed will make the loud cry. Thousands will come. For every death of a seven-day Adventist martyr, thousands will come, it says. Many today who are in this remnant church are nominal remnant. They are not remnant anymore. They are just numbers in the books of the church. God has a serious message for us today. God wants to wake up those who are willing to wake up, not just have revival peaks. Wake up and stay up on the mountaintop experience like Mount Carmel and say, if God be God or if Baal be Baal, whom he shall worship because that is coming again, the Sunday law, Sunday worship, Sabbath worship. And if we can't prepare to stand now, we will not stand when the test comes. And the very first step, unfortunately, is what God has taught us through the children of Israel and through even the Seventh Adventist beginnings. The beginnings of the children of Israel as a nation and the beginnings of Seventh Day Adventism. The very first thing is change of diet. That's the first step in the path of reformation. In preparation for salvation. To reach the promised land. So now you see the next thing that happens. They come and in Exodus 19. He says fast and pray. Fast and pray. So to fast, to be able to fast and pray properly. Because he says in Exodus 19. Sanctify them. That's the last part of Exodus chapter 19. Sanctify them. Three days fast and pray. So to fast and pray before that, he has already changed the diet. 
So now fasting and praying. In fact, if you read Exodus chapter 19 and verse 5, it says, "Ye are a chosen generation, a holy nation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people. Exodus 19 and verse 5. That is exactly what he tells about us, remnant in the New Testament in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. Ye are a chosen generation, a holy nation, a peculiar people, a royal priesthood. Look at the synonyms exactly used to the children of Israel, to this remnant in the last days, to say that you have been called out of darkness into his marvelous light, and therefore he's expecting us to show forth his praises. That is, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify Father in heaven. First Corinthians 10 31 says, Let um, first Corinthians 10 31 simply says that whether therefore eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do it all to the glory of God. People need to see something different about everything. I was in a supermarket. Uh, before we actually moved to the countryside, uh, I used to always shop in a supermarket called Asda. And um, I generally patronize somebody, if possible, so that I can repeatedly give them a message. And when I, when the Lord impresses me to go somebody else, I go to somebody else. So there was one person, one lady. So she would see my shopping. I shop once a week. Thursday evening is my shopping time. Because Friday, there's no time day during the day we work. So evening we need to prepare for the Sabbath. So all shopping has to be done on Thursday. So Thursday evening, I still do my shopping. So one week shopping, only once I go for shopping. I don't have time for shopping all the time. So here, uh, my trolley would be full. So the belt would be full. And that person who first initially saw what is on the belt. No meat, no dairy, no alcohol. No cigarettes. I'm in the Western country, so I'm talking about what people generally use here. So, so many things are not there of what they're used to. And seeing only plant-based food there and only fruits and vegetables and so on and so forth, grains and pulses and these. She said, um, is this all what you eat? I said, yes. Why? And therefore, big lecture and so on and so forth every time. And then until a few times later, this lady will be looking out on a Thursday for me. She eventually gave up alcohol drinking, eventually gave up smoking. And I hope and pray that she gave up meat eating and whatever and accept the gospel. We left. Unfortunately, we left the place. People People need to see the Lord. People need to see why this person is like this, why this person is different, why this person is eating like this, why this person is drinking like this, why this person is dressing like this, why this person is getting up like this, why this person is not angry, why this person is not using bad language, why, and so on and so forth. Whatsoever you do, do it all to the glory of God. That is the call of the remnant. If we do what everybody is doing, what is the difference? We are no, no remnant anymore. We are part of them. We are not remnant. Remnant is meant to be different. So, Exodus chapter 19. He simply tells them, by the way, you know this... Uh, a journey of children of Israel leaving Egypt, going to Canaan, is through the sanctuary. Let me touch this and remind you. We said uh, um, the Passover, the sacrificial lamb and the blood on the doorpost, that's the altar of sacrifice. And then they came to the Red Sea. That is the labor. And then God gives them manna. That is the table of shoe bread. And then in Exodus 19, the last few verses, he says to fast and pray. That's the altar of incense. And then um, Exodus 19, 5, he said, you are a chosen generation and a loyal peace to the holy nation. That means he, God wanted them to be a witness to everybody. That is the seven branch candle stand. And now in Exodus chapter 20, they arrive at Mount Sinai and God gives them the Ten Commandments. 
that is the most holy place the ark of the covenant judgment is going on right now through the sanctuary god brings the children of israel through the sanctuary and god wants us today to understand the sanctuary even the diet plan is in the sanctuary in the outer court the priests were asked to sacrifice and eat in the holy place no meat in the most holy place no meat and in the heaven holy and most holy exist no meat we us should live according to where jesus is jesus is in the most holy place and that is the condition of our life in everything including our diets the very first temptation that brought to jesus the very first temptation that brought to humanity adam and eve fell jesus did not fall we should not fall some people say jesus ate fish they don't understand the sanctuary in the outer court not in the holy and the most holy the remnant need to understand what god wants us to know for such a time as this so that we can be a people are called by his name that we can be a people who are representing him and that we can draw many by our witness today people don't want to hear about bible or about god or about jesus this i'm telling real time here in this part of the world but when they see your actions your words your deeds they are really and inclined to you and they are attracted to you and now when you talk to them something they are willing to listen i'm telling you testimony after testimony i have by the glory of god Jesus is waiting on his people just like he waited on the children of Israel for years hundreds of years hundreds of years he waited on them and they did not do what he said you can read account after account and they said all what you say we will do you can read the accounts how many times they say that all what you say we will do but how many of them do they don't do that is why jesus said i will take away your stones of heart or a stony heart and give you hearts of flesh so that he will write his laws on our hearts on our hearts of flesh and that is what we need because they had hearts of stone that is why jesus told them the parable of the good samaritan that is a heart of stone somebody is suffering and you walk past are we doing that today because jesus says in matthew 25 when he comes he separate the sheep from the goats and he says when i was sick when i was hungry when i was blind when i was naked when i was in prison when i was hospital are we willing to keep anybody and everybody in our house whom we don't even know strangers remember abraham welcomed strangers into his house and whom he welcomed jesus christ himself came in disguise the remnant of his seed are meant to be different from everybody else in every aspect of life children of israel finally arrive at kadesh barnea that is just on the border of canaan land God sends them back for 40 years again until everyone who was 20 years and above who were counted over that 6 lakhs adult men and women perished in the wilderness except for Joshua and Caleb and the next generation entered the promised land but here we don't have a next generation i believe jesus is coming in this generation i believe we have that privilege of walking into heaven without seeing the first death if god permits that 
And we are not going to walk into heaven except that we be like Joshua and Caleb. The remnant of our seed, seven day Adventists, we need to understand who we ought to be. God wants us to know today, if we have already not woken up, that we wake up, that we wake up before it is too late. When it is too late, when judgment is done, not when probation closes for the whole world, that's when Michael stands up, judgment shall begin at the house of the Lord, that is with the remnant. First Peter 4, 17. And it says, if ye shall not stand, how will the ungodly fare? If the righteous uh, barely can be saved, what will happen to the rest? Please read First Peter 4, 17 and 18. Judgment begins with us. And those that are sealed are those who will be entering heaven. If you don't have the seal, you will not enter heaven. Seal is the Sabbath, no doubt. But so many other conditions apply. And that is what we need to understand. May God be with us as we live in these last days. That we will be the people that God expects us to be. I pray that this will be our privilege. Because we don't know when our names will be opened in the books of heaven. We need to be ready now and all the time. So that God will be able to say, enter into my kingdom. May that be our experience. God be with all of us. Thank you so much, brother. Robert, for that wonderful message. In closing, okay. shall we all sing in number 213? Lift up the trumpet. After the song, I will request Brother Robert, Elder Robert, to please lead us in prayer. In number 213. Lift up the trumpet and long let it ring. Jesus is coming again. Cheer up, you pilgrim, be joyful and sing. Jesus is coming again. Coming again, coming again. Jesus is coming again. Echo it in thoughts, proclaim it in flame. Jesus is coming again. Coming in glory, the Lamb that was slain. Jesus is coming again. Coming again, coming again. Jesus is coming again. Hearing of her, tell the worst wandering throng. Jesus is coming again. Tempest and whirlwinds, the anthem prolong. Jesus is coming again. Coming again, coming again. Jesus is coming again. Nations are angry, by this we do know. Jesus is coming again. Knowledge increases, men run to and fro. Jesus is coming again. Coming again, coming again. Jesus is coming again. 
let us pray mighty god heavenly father we thank you for the blessed uh, privilege of hearing your words thank you for the breath of life and counting among the living thank you for your words and the leading you have given us i pray lord if there's anything that we need to change in our lives that your holy spirit will inculcate in us and point us what we ought to change so that we you can restore your image in our lives so that people who see us who meet us who hear us who talk to us will see you and hear you and be drawn on to you may that be our blessed experience so that when our names are not looked upon that you would not find anything wanting but would rejoice and say enter into the kingdom o oh lord afford us that grace and help us to walk towards that and until we meet again you'll keep us from the wiles of the devil and from falling in jesus name i pray amen Thank you one thank you all god be with you all thank you so much brother